Espionage. Nowadays, everyone seems to do it. Espionage is all around us, but what I personally find truly interesting is how it is done. How does one infiltrate some of the most classified, heavily guarded places on Earth and get away with it, not get caught? Well, if you one day aspire to be a spy and you want a trusted playbook to follow, there's no better espionage playbook than that of China, the Chinese Communist Party, aka the CCP, specifically with the plethora of ways that they have infiltrated the United States in recent years to obtain insurmountable amounts of classified top secret intel in their race to become the number one world superpower. So without further ado, let's get into China's espionage playbook, which consists of 10 tried and true methods. Method number one, coercion. Chinese travelers are often targeted by the CCP and coerced into carrying out specific intelligence activities, such as obtaining secretive info from open sources like libraries, research institutions, and unclassified databases, reviews of US technical and academic publications, and even through interactions with US scientists and other top officials, whatever info you can get. China then debriefs these individuals once they come back into the country, and the trick is using a large number of individuals to collect small pieces of information each, which are then pieced together back at home. This approach is surprisingly quite effective, and it easily escapes any suspicion. Number 2. Forcing Foreign Compliance Specifically, the regulatory and commercial environment in China pressures American and other foreign companies to transfer technology, capital, and manufacturing expertise, especially in defense-related or dual-use industries such as computers, to their Chinese partners as part of doing business in China's huge, lucrative markets. And as a foreign business, if you want to tap into the wallets of those 1.5 billion Chinese citizens, you must give the CCP, who has control over the entire Chinese private sector, access to your company's technology and expertise. Otherwise, you get no money. You get no market share. Method number three, acquiring intellectual property. This is done somewhat legally and illegally. To explain, Chinese agents will often purchase high-tech equipment through anonymous front organizations in Hong Kong. China also uses state-run firms to purchase American companies with access to specific targeted technology that they seek to copy or better understand from a competitive standpoint. On the other hand though, it is also estimated that China steals between 200 and 600 billion dollars worth of American intellectual property every single year. For example, individuals with ties to the CCP have been caught illegally shipping equipment and trade secrets from California to China, as well as shipping a new high-speed computer used in classified projects such as nuclear weapons development from a US nuclear laboratory. They love their intellectual property, as that's what gives them their competitive advantage. That's what allows them to seize market share from their foreign counterparts. Method number four, seduction. Eric Swalwell, who serves on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, was in the past targeted by a Chinese woman using the alias Christine Fang, a student at a Bay Area University, believed to be a clandestine officer of China's Ministry of State Security. She developed extensive ties with politicians at local and national levels between 2011 and 2015, and she was reportedly having sexual and romantic relationships with at least two mayors in the Midwest. Furthermore, the alleged spy later participated in the fundraising for Swalwell's 2014 congressional election bid and helped place an intern inside his office to listen in on secretive meetings and deals. Method number five, infiltrating higher education. 
In September 2020, it was reported that the US cancelled the visas of 1,000 Chinese students and researchers. Authorities claimed that the students had ties with the Chinese military and also accused some of them of conducting espionage, which based on the previous case of Christine Fang, held some truth. Number 6. Cyber Warfare China regularly conducts political and corporate espionage to access the networks of financial, defense, and technology companies as well as research institutions in the United States. For example, email attachments attempting to enter the networks of US companies and organizations exploit security weaknesses in the software. A recipient opens an email attachment, apparently from a familiar source, containing a program which embeds in the recipient's computer. This remotely controlled program then allows an attacker to access the recipient's email, send sensitive documents to specific addresses, and turn on webcams and microphones to watch and listen in in real time. To add on, in October 2018, it was alleged that Supermicro's contractors in China had been coerced by the People's Liberation Army to implant microchips with hardware backdoors in its servers to compromise its US clients. And what is truly shocking is that this is just barely scratching the surface of the cyber crimes executed in recent years, all to create a competitive advantage for Chinese businesses to advance the development of the Chinese military and weaponry to expose the weaknesses of the US and to become number one. Method number seven, aerospace. In order to enable Chinese companies to supply the components for the Comac C919 aircraft, the CCP reached out to Turbine Panda, who were linked to the Ministry of State Security's Jiangshu Bureau to penetrate a number of the C919's foreign components manufacturers, including Amtec, Capstone Turbine, GE Aviation, Honeywell, Saffron, and others to steal the intellectual property and industrial processes data with the aim of transitioning component manufacturing solely to Chinese companies. In most cases, they did this by using a piece of code custom written for this industrial espionage operation to hack into these companies' systems. Also, China often recruits insiders at multiple aerospace and aviation companies like GE Aviation to gain knowledge about their technologies. They've even stolen classified information on many military-grade hardware, submarines, ICBMs, and thermonuclear warheads from US aerospace and defense laboratories to direct towards the development of their own modern nuclear weapons and army. Method number eight, US land. US Department of Agriculture data shows that Chinese ownership of US farmland leapt from $81 million in 2010 to $1.8 billion dollars in 2020. And these acquisitions get very suspicious when we find out that the Fufeng Group, a Chinese agricultural company, bought 300 acres of land and set up a milling plant in Grand Forks, North Dakota, which is a mere 20 minute drive from an Air Force base that supposedly hosts a critical space mission. So you must be wondering, why doesn't the US stop this if it's so suspicious? Well, because of complex corporate structures that help the Chinese government and investors obscure ownership and evade scrutiny. For example, one Chinese billionaire, Sun Gongshin, invested an estimated $110 million in Texas farmland in Val Verde County through a web of anonymous shell companies for which he planned to build a wind turbine farm over 15,000 acres that would give him access to the Texas electricity grid. And it's no coincidence that the only other thing nearby in the area was the Laughlin Air Force Base. Method number nine, telecommunications. To specify, a number of years ago, several Chinese telecommunication companies, Huawei and ZTE being the most prominent, charged very low, extremely discounted amounts for their gear to undersell the market and lure small regional US telecom companies to buy. And they gladly accepted and equipped the gear to their towers since they were a great deal. Who would turn it down? 
However, little did they know that Huawei and ZTE were doing what they were told and enacting espionage as they're tied to the CCP who gives them their orders. They're one with and beholden to the Chinese government. And now all of a sudden, small communication networks and towers, specifically 200 US carriers, largely in rural areas, are saddled with tap Chinese equipment that they can't afford to remove and replace as they are small to middle market local businesses. They're not basking in excess cash flow and promised funds from Congress aren't coming quickly enough and when they do, they aren't even close to covering the total costs of tearing down and replacing the gear. And while we're at this crossroad attempting to solve this extremely expensive problem, the Chinese government can access the equipment whenever they want, since it's their own, and listen in on calls, and even interfere with critical infrastructure and military operations. Finally, method number 10 in this espionage playbook, a classic strategy, the double agent. In one of the cases in 2019, two Chinese intelligence officers, Go Chun He and Zhang Wang, directed a US government official to steal confidential information about the criminal case against Huawei, including files from the US Attorney's Office in Brooklyn. In exchange, the double agent received bribes worth $61,000 in Bitcoin. Later on, the US government official sent over a memo that outlined a plan to charge and arrest two Huawei employees living in China to He and Wang, who then paid the undercover operative another $41,000 in Bitcoin. Communications between the double agent and the two Chinese operatives lasted until October 20th, 2022. In other cases, prized US professors and scientists with direct access to high rank information in fields such as nanoscience are regularly offered upwards of $50,000 a month by the CCP to work in a number of top Chinese labs such as the Wuhan lab under complete discretion as evidenced by the DOJ's arrest of Dr. Charles Lieber chair of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Harvard University in September 2020. Again, all of these tactics, these strategies, are only the methods that have been exposed that we know of. Imagine all of the tactics we still don't know anything about. Information is the most valuable resource in the world, and every prominent country, business, and individual knows that and has that ingrained in their mind, and they will stop at nothing to acquire it.